Okay. Um, good afternoon. But before I start, I would like to make an announcement. And so there will be going to be a, 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 I think this is the sixth uh, TNA SAA, the workshop on this universe day software and applications. And uh, they'll be held in Taiwan, in Shinshu, this is a national center for theoretical physics and <coughs> theoretical science. Um, December 2nd to 5th. Um, so please, uh, if you're interested, uh, uh, please uh, mark these dates. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll send out the first announcement and create a website um, when I get back to Taiwan. Um, so for those who are not familiar with uh, Taiwan's geography, I'll tell you. <laughs> okay, so this is the current weather in Taiwan. But in December, you don't see this. Or, or you, there's a slight probability you will see typhoon, but. Okay, so here's Taipei Shinto here. So it's like a, a 60 kilometers between these two cities, and there's a high speed train connected these two. And uh, to attract uh, the Japanese uh, researchers, We'll order a bubble tea there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so please mark the, the your calendar. Um, so first, I would like to thank uh, thank uh, uh, Kawashima Sensei for for the opportunity to present our, our recent work and uh, give me the honor to to be the closing uh, talk of the the whole workshop. So I was thinking, what should I talk about? And uh, um, so what I, I decided to talk about is something I collaborated with uh, with uh, uh, ISSB. Um, so basically, it's a uh, uh, Fukushima san and Oshikawa sensei. Um, so part of the the presentation is uh, is already published in this work. Okay. So these are my collaborators: uh, it's Professor Bo Zhong Chen and his student uh, Zhong Yao Wo, and he's uh, the uh, person uh, responsible for, for the, the numerics, and also the, uh, Oshikawa Sensei and uh, Yoshiki. Okay. And he's responsible for the vocalization part. So, um, oh, okay. so I should go back and explain a little bit uh, this type title. So what we're interested in, in this is, is this uh, uh, quantum wire junction. So basically, I'm going to define to you like, what I mean by quantum wire and uh, the junctions, and uh, we came up with a, a, a nice way with that we can, we can really characterize all this, uh, all the correlation functions and the and different like RG fixed points. Um, and we can really verify a, a lot of the theoretical results. Okay, so this is a, so the motivation, okay, and uh, I was uh, instructed to, to make some comments related to experiments in my talk. Okay. So, um, quantum mechanics becomes very important now well, because you're, 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 you're shrinking the sizes. And uh, normally as a physicist, you, you not only want to make the device, you want to see if there are any like, uh, universal properties and if there is some way to, to um, study them. And uh, so my focus will be just uh, uh, this uh, Tomo uh, Naga. Uh, sorry, T L L. Sorry, T L L. Tomo Naga Lumpy Chair Liquid. Sorry, T T L. Now everything. So, um, so it as a quantum wire. Okay. Um, so since uh, uh, people like uh, uh, 20 years ago, people start to see like Lattinger la liquid behavior in these uh, carbon nanotubes, and uh, this is the most recent uh, publication I can find. And people could already uh, manufacture a lot of this uh, this uh, quantum wells and or like nano wires, and they can really see the the conductance uh, which behaves like a, a, a Lattinger liquid. So there's a lot of uh, potential candidate to to have this Lattinger liquid wires and uh, and uh, recently um, there's a, a group uh, in, in, in France that they um, use uh, this kind of uh, uh, quantum dot and simulate this uh, this uh, uh, behavior so basically it's a Lattinger liquid uh, wire but with the impurity okay so basically they can 
uh, experimentally tune this uh, this uh, uh, this pair tunneling between these two uh, latigulated wires, and they can really measure the conductance. And um, what I'm going to explain in the following um, for for this, if you tune your your conductance to 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 one, then you you see this uh, this uh, full conductance. But if you tune your your conductance, uh, this uh, this tunneling amplitude. Um, you are simultaneously go to the go to zero. Okay, so this is um, this. So what I'm going to talk about is not not only uh, uh, some uh, 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 theoretical uh, dreams. It's already people are already studying in in real systems, and a lot of the uh, answer question in in this system. Say for example, there's no no scaling results for how how to scale the the, the non equilibrium the finite bias system. So to simplify things, uh, this is what I'm going to talk about, and this is the famous uh, Ken Fisher problem. So uh, we're thinking um, there's a 1D latigial liquid. So you have two latigial liquid wires, and they are connected by a weak link. Okay. And um, the interesting thing is that uh, Ken and Fisher um, showed in their paper depends on the the, the coupling inside your Lattinger liquid wire. Um, so this weak link perturbation well, can be uh, irrelevant or, or relevant. So the RG fixed point for if the, the is a repulsive interaction, then the RG fixed point becomes two disconnected uh, Lattinger liquid wires. But if the uh, the the interaction in the wire is attractive. And the RG fixed point will just will be a heat, this uh, perturbation become relevant and it's gonna heal the the latitude liquid and it becomes a, just a single latitude liquid wire. Um, so one can go build on top of this uh, more complicated systems and. Uh, part of my focus will be uh, on this wide junction system. Uh, so. I think uh, there's a, a theoretical results proposed by uh, Claudio Shimon and Masaki and uh, Ian Affleck. Uh, they predict some some different fixed points uh, on on this uh, this wide junction. So basically, you have latigial liquid wires, and you have this uh, uh, weak link around the ring. But you can apply a flux. It depends on the the different parameters and different coupling constants that you can have different uh, fixed points okay and these are the theoretical prediction that uh, um, will be interesting to, to check if the, though they exist and um, yeah so the, 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 the big picture that we are interested in is, is something like this you can think of these different wires they just uh, you have a, a, a you have a bias, and uh, they have current, and they they only interact through this uh, this junction, and you can try to find if there's a if if your your junction has satisfied some some criterion, can you uh, find some uni universal behavior? For example, a universal conductance um, of uh, of of this kind of setup. Okay, um, so. There are uh, 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 various uh, techniques have been developed. Um, for example, if you, you one, one can use uh, if you have a, a conformal invariant boundary condition, then one can apply this boundary CFT method to get some ideas of uh, what this universal conductance will be. And uh, um, in the following, I will introduce some of the numerical methods uh, people have attempted, we have attempted, and uh, the, 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 the most recent successful one. So, um, so this is my one slide summary of a uh, Latin Jupiter liquid wire. Okay. <coughs> so in the first part of the study, we're going to just uh, uh, focus on the uh, so, I mean, we're going to just focus on the spinless fermion, so there's a there's no spin part of the, the uh, there's no spin on excitations. Um, so one can 
one can study the fermion problem directly, or in one D you can do a, a Jordan Wigner transformation and do a do a, a equivalent uh, spin uh, model. And uh, since this is a one D and uh, uh, problem fermion problem, one can apply these subnormalization uh, techniques. Okay, and uh, I'll just uh, refer this to to local experts. Um, and uh, so. What we're going to do in the following is that um, we're going to study this model, and there's a mapping between this, uh, this uh, next neighbor interaction uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, um, the Lovinger parameter. So the question we want to ask is, given this setup, we want to ask what kind of boundary condition or what's the boundary contribution uh, of this uh, of this junction will affect the the, the, the transport. Okay. So uh, at least in the linear response regime, we can get uh, uh, this information by by Kubo formula. So um, what has to do is just to calculate the current current correlation function because okay. these are just uh, um, integrals. So one, if you know how to compute the current current correlation functions with the presence of this junction, then you'll know some you'll know something about this boundary condition. Okay. <coughs> um, so naively, we'll, we'll, we'll think that the the conductance will have uh, this is the original uh, Lattinger liquid uh, conductance. And there will be some corrections coming from 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 the uh, from the boundary or from from this junction. And the question is, how can one compute this this correction okay, with the presence of the junction? Um, in some simple cases, if you um, one can uh, use this uh, boundary conformal field theory, okay, and basically just calculate the correlator in the presence of this uh, boundary states. Um, and numerically, if one can uh, directly compute this uh, correlator, then you will get this. Okay, so z here is just uh, x plus uh, i tau uh, i i t or uh, i x plus t depends on your convention. So the focus of, of the, uh, my talk will be tell you how one can do this. So, but if you think about it, and then you, you realize that there are some some issues here. Okay, in principle, this um, this has a space time correlation because this z one and z two may be on different points on the on the complex plane. So, in general, you have to consider the dynamical correlators, and uh, we know that time dependent correlators are very hard to compute. Well, at least it's non-trivial, and also all these assumptions is that you have a you have a, a wire which just goes to infinity, okay, on one side, and then you have a you have a, a, a weak link, and there's a, another wire goes to uh, infinity. So you have a semi-infinite wire, okay, and this uh, this becomes. Uh, Difficult because you you basically have to you are you are dealing with an infinite system, and the Lattinger liquid we know is a is a is a, a gapless the gapless excitations which make uh, all these numerics even more difficult. Okay, so how do we address these uh, challenges? The first one, um, one can exploit this uh, this conformal symmetry because the uh, Lattinger liquid you have this uh, conformal symmetry. So basically, you can just calculate a, a spatial correlation and you do a conformal transformation. You give you the whatever the the, the correlation correlator you want. Okay. So we don't really need to do a time dependent calculation at least uh, for this case. We we just need to get get the the, the spatial correlation, okay. and uh, this is uh, becomes much easier because this is just a static uh, ground state expectation value. 
at least in the linear response region. Um, the more challenging one is the, how do you deal with the infinitely large system? Um, so there are two strategies. One strategy is you, you can map into a, a finite system. Okay, then it's a 1D system, then you can do DMRG. Or another way is that let's just uh, do an uh, infinite size system directly. And uh, this is what we tried. We tried MERA. And the, the most recent one, we tried a uh, so called IDMRG, infinite, infinite DMRG. So um, the first approach is uh, 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 proposed by um, Shimon's group. Um, so the idea is that, okay, since you are interested in this kind of system, okay, so I mean, this, is, this, is a, this is a complex plan, and uh, uh, this is, uh, say for example the junction is that uh, uh, t equals zero, then this is your upper complex plan, and you can do a you can do a, a, a conformal mapping of the upper complex plane to a finite strip. Okay. But this doesn't give you a complete system. So the trick is that you need to cap the system on the other end. You have to cap this system on the other end. So make it a, a, a close, a, 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 a finite size system. And to get this, uh, to to get this, uh, this capping Hamiltonian, okay, so they have to rely on just uh, the um, the intuition you get from the from free fermions. Okay, so this is the this is a kind of a, a cap boundary condition you have to 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 apply. So you have a right Hamiltonian, which is the complex conjugate of and uh, uh, time reversal of symmetric uh, uh, mirror image. Okay. Um, so for the Kenshi Fisher problem they can get some res uh, reasonable results in terms of the, 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 the scaling. Okay. But you have to add this, uh, this uh, boundary condition it's just a little bit ad hoc. So we try this uh, more sophisticated uh, tensor network method, which can describe this uh, latigial liquid behavior better. We scale invariant mera, and we add uh, this uh, impurity as a boundary mera, and uh, we can get, uh, say, for example, a scanning dimension um, directly from this computation. But the the pitfall of this method is that we have to basically enforce scale invariance all the way because this is how the, the, the techniques the, or the answer is designed. So if you look at this, uh, this uh, say the current current correlator, you always see a power law, right? And uh, you cannot really see any like short distance behavior because you basically you are forcing this power law from the beginning with. Okay? And even like this uh, this re this uh, this uh, fixed point that I expected to have some some disconnect disconnected uh, uh, um, a fixed point, I still s can only say some power law, and just the power is uh, is larger than minus two. I mean, it's, so when do the integration is gonna go to zero? But we cannot really say much about what's going on between here. Even here. So we start to ask our, ourselves this question: How can we study the crossover from the short distance and the long distance physics? And uh, uh, from our previous attempts, we don't get uh, enough accuracy to resolve any uh, subletting corrections. Okay. Um, so back to the drawing board. So this is what we uh, are, 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 are thinking. So I have a, okay, I always have a TTL, I don't know why. <laughs> so we, we can simulate a liquid, OK? 
can you can use the scale in their Mera, but Mera is uh, very expensive, and you can use infinite MPS. But the problem is that now we have impurity, we have a junction, so the translation invariance is broken. Okay. Um, so it's no longer uh, feasible just directly apply the uh, uh, infinite size MPS just to as your answers. Okay, and uh, one can do um, what I described before. But we, what we realize that um, we can slightly modify this and take advantage of this uh, so-called infinite boundary conditions. Okay. And uh, that will, <coughs> will uh, help us um, to really simulate this uh, system. Uh, I'll give some a uh, brief introduction of this uh, infinite boundary condition. So, um, if you assume translational invariance, okay, so in the in the uh, mixed canonical form, then you can write your MPS wave function. So this extends to infinity, like this, and you write your uh, Hamiltonian in terms of some MPO. So basically, uh, for m body interaction, you can always decompose it into some some matrix product operators. And for the XXE model, I mean, this is uh, what we studied in the, in the first part. Um, so we can write down this, uh, this MPO as a 5 by 5 matrix. And by multiplying this uh, matrix, and you just generate all, this, uh, all these interaction terms, okay, after you cap it with some, some side vectors. So the idea of this uh, idea Margie, uh, proposed by uh, Ian McClock is basically um, it's a, it's a slight, it's a modification of the, uh, Steve Weiss original infinite size uh, DMRG. But the idea is basically you can just uh, have a window of matrices. Okay? And then you apply your Hamiltonian and optimize this window and until it converges, and then you push it out. Okay, you push it out, and if you keep doing this, if, if you push out, and when you push this out, you'll have a, a, a generalized transfer matrix for, for the um, uh, left orthogonal matrices, and there's a, a generalized matrix for right orthogonal matrices. Okay, and uh, if somehow you can find a, 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 a vector, basically this reaches some, some fixed point. So basically it's some boundary condition. And then all you need to do, calculate the, the correlation functions and all that, will be just uh, calculate, just do a finite DMRG uh, calculation. Okay. So the algorithm has the advantages I mean, in the original DMRG, you just keep pushing it out, and then you have to do a sweep, to a finite size sweep to to uh, converge the, the the energy to to fix the wave function. But here, the the uh, sweep is all already done in this window, okay? so they already have some information, and it's coupled to this infinite boundary condition. So, uh, in a sense that you can get this uh, information. So now the trick is uh, how do you get this uh, infinite boundary condition? So this will be your your window Hamiltonian, okay, which is a finite size Hamiltonian. Um, so there are several tricks. Um, so you can first you need to get the eigenvector, the dominant eigenvector of this uh, generalized uh, 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 transfer matrix, and there's some linear equations one needs to solve. But after doing all this, then you get the get the um, a, a boundary MPO which is simulates the, this infinite boundary on the left, and this simulates the infinite boundary on the right. So we can try this on on a, 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 a translational invariant system. So we keep a window. So this is the size of window, two times ten to the four, the size of our window. And we can do a calculation. 
So these are different uh, pr uh, um, latitude parameters um, at, and at, at different with different bound dimensions. Okay, and from latitude uh, liquid, we uh, theory we know that the power law should be this power should be minus two. And so we can get minus two pretty well. And also, we can see that we can improve the, um, the accuracy of this correlator by in increasing the bound dimension. Okay, for example, the 400 to, to 800 and the to 2000. Okay, you see that the, the, um, the place that this, this uh, system starts to deviate from the power law is pushed back in. And notice that this is a kind of uh, accuracy, so 10 to the 8 or 10 to the 9, this is the, the kind of accuracy we need to extract with uh, very subtle information. Okay. Um, so all these power laws, actually, because this, for example, this is the S plus, S minus, we, we can match all these power laws very accurately. Um, and even at a short distance, um, there are some beta ansatz results. And so this is our, our, our calculation. This is our, our IDM RG calculation. These are beta ansatz. And these are the actual errors. So even the short distance behavior, we can get it very accurately using this method. Okay. So, so far I'm just telling you how this works, and it works for a translational invariant system. But this is how we apply to a, a system with a, 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 a weak link. So basically the idea is the is same. I have a window, OK, I have a window here. And I assume that my wave function very far away from this impurity, locally the tensors are the same. Okay. So my MPS, I can safely say, okay, uh, these are the these are the, the same wave function as the translational invariant one, okay? Because because uh, you, you expect that the f the physics of this uh, this uh, impurity will as, at least locally will look uh, very similar. So and so what we will do is that we just fix these boundary conditions that I obtained previously from the translational invariant case. I just fix it, I don't update it. Okay? So this will, set, it will, will, will simulate this semi-infinite uh, uh, Lavinger liquid wire. And I just modify my, my um, MPL inside for this, this one, this omega tilde will correspond to the, the, the MPL for this, uh, this junction. And so I kept this, so I don't have to do this, uh, this uh, boundary iteration, and I just do a finite size. I just do a finite size uh, DMRG. So that's the idea. Okay. So it's actually pretty straightforward. And the good thing also is that I just need to do this, uh, this uh, thing once, okay, I can then mesh different, say, different coupling constants and all that. So I just save these tensors. So the, the first example I'm, I'm going to show you is uh, how we, we, we address this, uh, this famous Kane Fisher problem. Okay. So this is the uh, schematic uh, uh, flow, uh, RG flow diagram of the, this, this problem. And remember that this you have two latitude liquid with a weak link. Um, so we can define the, the, the UV limit because it flows to the, here. So when, when the G, this, uh, this uh, latitude parameter is, uh, is uh, less than one, you start with a, 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 a weak link, but it flows to zero okay, because then the perturbation becomes irrelevant. But um, when you have a uh, uh, G-dilution 1, then it flows to this uh, healed boundary convention. Okay? And so in the, in the boundary um, C, 
CFT kind of a lingo is correspond to different boundary conditions. And and and, and so to get these subleading corrections, one can just uh, do a uh, do this further first order perturbation. So there will be some some tunneling coming out of this uh, this uh, wire and go back. Um, so with this, Yoshiki okay. was uh, able to, to obtain those uh, correlators, and we can identify different uh, leading uh, leading uh, exponents. Okay. And I just uh, I just list them. I won't go go through the details. Okay. For example, it depends on the your your coupling constant and also the which limit you you are in will correspond to different uh, boundary conditions. And what I'm circle here is just the uh, uh, leading exponents okay, for these cases. Okay, so this is basically the full table. Okay? So if from from the field theory side, we know that um, at different uh, length scale, what what the, the exponents for this uh, for the power law for for these uh, different correlators are, okay. and um, the first you want to see is this uh, this IR behavior of this uh, current current correlator because this is directly related to the to the um, your conductance. Okay. So G larger than one, I expect it to to uh, have the same bulk behavior. Okay. So um, again, here are just different correlators. Okay. So. Um, Let's focus on this one first. This is the current current <coughs> correlator, and what's plotted here is actually different um, uh, uh, strength of this weak link. Okay. And as you can see, we, we expect this uh, this uh, perturbation become relevant when g larger than one. So if you closer to the t is closer to one, you expect it to to become la, la, behave like Lattinger liquid. Um, faster, and this is indeed all the case that we saw. Right. So this falls to this uh, parallel results uh, pretty quickly. While well, at a very very weak link, and the system takes a while to to realize that it has to go to this Lattinger liquid behavior. And we can match all these uh, uh, exponents here. And a more careful analysis. We can also identify. Okay, so these are the scaled um, uh, correlators uh, because there's some prefactor we, we can scale away. And uh, so, as here uh, we just show two cases. This is a very weak link, so we know that when they are G, the IR fixed point, we should be just uh, disconnected. And uh, so, there is some prediction from the from the field theory. There's a uh, 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 different exponents, and these are the lines that we plotted here. Okay. So this is a 2G, for example, this is 1 over 2G. Okay. And it, as you can see, it, the parallel matches uh, very uh, nicely, and we can see this uh, crossover behavior from short distance to long distance. And more surprisingly, Sorry. yeah. Why that crossover is, seems to be defined? Uh -huh. Actually, we, we don't really know because we we, 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 um, we don't really know um, in this uh, real system. I mean, in this uh, microscope system, where does this perturbation theory applies? Okay, it's possible that it just break down uh, faster in in this. Uh, in this region, so we, we don't really know. Uh, yeah. Okay, and more surprisingly, okay, so this curve here, and uh, Masaki and Yoshiki can they can calculate this uh, prefactor exactly. So we basically have no feeding parameter here. So these are the exact, and you can, you can see this. And uh, this accuracy, yeah, so 
we divide it by t. So this is like 10 to the fifth, you know, six, and here's like 10 to the uh, tenth, right? You need an accuracy of 10 to the tenth to really see this kind of behavior. Um, again, this other side of story is um, just uh, repeating, and again, this this part is no fitting parameter. Okay, so. At least for this case, we, we demonstrated, okay, this method can really work for this uh, very um, uh, simple but non-trivial system. And we can really observe uh, all this uh, expected behavior from the field theory side. Um, so, then we can apply this method. So this is a benchmark uh, kind of uh, simulation, and we can apply this method to more complicated systems. So I'm going to tell you two part of the story um, that we, we tried, and there's still some open questions that we 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 were were hoping to resolve. Um, so before I move on, any questions on this part? How did you define the current operator for that system? Uh, so we basically just uh, do a S plus. So it's like a link. So we, we actually have a, a link operator. So S plus, S minus. So, it's, uh, so we calculate those correlators, but we also do an average because there's a, a, a sub lattice and B sub lattice. Yeah. So this is the average. So the fixed the table is Yeah, yeah. <coughs> okay. So the the setup can be easily generalized to two different Luttinger liquid wires. As I said, that we don't have to redo the the translation invariant calculation because we can just take, for example, the G one of the wire that we we got and the other wire, and just mesh them and do a finite size DMR. So that's actually make life uh, much easier. And so the next thing we try is that we have two different wires and there's a, a weak link. And there's a theoretical prediction saying that the, the, the conductance, the fixed point, is governed by this uh, effective uh, 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 Lattinger parameter. So it's a little bit complicated. So basically, uh, regardless of this is uh, attractive or repulsive, as long as this guy is attractive, then the RG fixed point is a uh, healed Lattinger liquid, and vice versa. Okay. Um, so we can do a, a cap. We can do this calculation, and the result shown here is just a, a different uh, G1 and G2 but they all produce a, the same effective uh, G and with different T's, okay? So from previous uh, uh, um, results, we know that this should, should, should uh, give you a, a decoupled wire. Um, but as you can see, here it doesn't look very nice because you don't really see some kind of universal behavior as in the identical wire cases. Um, and again, this is a with different type of uh, the coupling constant for this and this, but effective uh, uh, coupling constant is is larger than one. So you expect one expect that there there be a, a lot of uh, behavior at long distance. Okay. Um, so, but it's not that good. Okay. So. This is uh, currently our puzzle. So we are not sure uh, what, what's going on. Maybe there's uh, some corrections we, 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 we don't know about. But because of this simple setup, we can try directly measure the conductance. Okay? So what's conductance? Conductance is your current divided by your, your, your bias. So we can just 
dir directly evolve the system and then just uh, measure the, the, the current and get the conductance. So the, the setup is like this. Okay. Um, so the ground, we basically s prepare the, the ground state and then quench the ground state at t equals zero with some, some uh, small bias potential. Okay. And uh, we're not, not the first one to try, and this has been tried before. Um, in 2006, and people used a, a, a finite size DMR G okay, to do this. But as you can see, this uh, uh, this extremely uh, strong finite size effect in their calculation. Um, so the way we uh, time evolve our, our our system is just using this uh, uh, TBD. So basically, just do a charter Suzuki decomposition of the, uh, the even and odd, uh, to separate into e even and odd uh, uh, time evolution operators. So the only thing that uh, caveat is that now we have this, uh, this uh, infinite boundary conditions. So we need to evolve this, uh, th this part uh, separately. Okay. So I have another part which is evolve the, we have uh, evolved the, evolving the, the tensor at the left boundary, okay, and the right boundary. So I'm gonna show you some results. So first, uh, we test this on, on a, okay, I have to fix TTO somehow. This is some 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 uh, IC standard I played when I was a kid. It register. Anyway. So we try this Lattinger liquid and quench into a, a, this kind of potential. There's a bias, okay. And the conductance for this case, we know that the conductance uh, is uh, is proportional to the uh, to the Lattinger parameter, okay, times this e square over h. Um, so here is a time evolution, spatial time evolution of this uh, this uh, uh, waveform, okay. Um, so, but let's just focus on this. So, we can really get some quasi uh, steady state, and this state, this is the steady state. So, this is a J divided by delta V, so it corresponds to conductance in this unit. Okay. So here, the steady. I mean, this is the oscillator around point A, which is G point A. It's oscillator around one, and it's oscillator around the one point two. Okay. So. Um, at least in this case, we see this uh, is pretty clear, and uh, and we can do this uh, with identical wires, okay. and we, we also know that the scaling, the conductance eventually will, will depends will become a Lattinger liquid like if G is larger than one, if zero then G is less than one, and for G equal one is non interacting fermion, so there's an exact result you can compare to. And here, this conductance, this asymptotically go to zero, as expected, and this asymptotically go to 1.5, which is uh, the Lattinger liquid result, and uh, this matches the, the exact result. Okay. So we are pretty confident that this method is working. So we can try this on, on, on a system with different Gs. Okay. So here um, we try with different G1, G2, but uh, all, all the effective uh, G are the same. So, um, so if the theoretical prediction is correct, we need we will get the uh, uh, conductance, which is 1.2 times the the, the conductance unit conductance, and um, this is true. Because all converge, the steady state all goes to 1.2. Okay. So what plotted here um, for the, uh, the the red line is we, what we got from the current current correlation direct integrate it to get the conductance. Okay. So in a more physical sense, we again obtain this uh, this uh, uh, this conductance and this, this matches our expectation. So there are some discrepancies that we, we don't quite understand. Okay. So
So, again, we can apply it to a more complicated theory. So this is the kind of polygrail for our study, this Y junction. Okay? So, um, this problem has been attempted by uh, a lot of people, even like a, a Steve Y a very long time ago tried to attack this problem, but I think we, we have a, a control method that can say a lot of things. Okay? So, uh, as I mentioned in the introduction, um, depends on the, the coupling constant and also the, the flux, they have uh, different fixed points. So we just focus on all the all, all the wires are the same, um, and you can insert a, a, a flux and breaks the time reversal symmetry. Okay. So this becomes a system that we we want to in, uh, study. So you can treat this as uh, some black black box, and for the future reference, I can define um, there are some. Uh, Vector, so we can have a like right hand. Uh, so, uh, there's a chirality that you can you can define. Okay. Um, so this is becomes a little bit complicated because um, it's not strictly one D. Okay, and here we did a, a fermion simulation. So how how you uh, you arrange your fermions size becomes important. Okay, so. This is how we arrange our, our fermions. That, so you have a, a very distinct um, sense of ordering. And we are just putting some boundaries uh, around here. So this will be our window. Um, and you have to apply some MPOs. So this is uh, actually technically more involved because the sweeping becomes more complicated. and uh, but. Still, we can say um, a lot of things. And here are the theoretical predictions <coughs> from, from this paper. Okay. So, depends on the G, there's a, a so called N fixed point. Basically, the three wires are disconnected. And if you apply flux, 2 pi over 2 flux, um, when the G is in this region, there will be some chiral fixed point. And uh, when G is larger, you have some D fixed point. So let's check uh, the free fermion case. Okay, for the free fermion case, we have an exact formula for for um, with regard to the the the, uh, the uh, weak coupling, the weak link strength, and the uh, um, and the flux. Okay, um, so here we can get the the exact results. With, without a flux and with a flux. Okay, so these are the expected results. And um, yeah, so these are the uh, different chiralities. So here we check um, G less than one. Okay, so N is the f uh, stable fixed point. It's a time reversal symmetric, and the capacitance it should flow to zero. Which means that your current current correlator, the power should be larger than two. So it's minus two plus something. So that when you do an integral, this will go away. I mean, the leading correction. And this is exactly the case. So this line is the, the um, power minus two. Um, let's forget about this t equal to one case. It's, it's hard to see, but actually, if you look at other cases, it's the, the power law of this. This is the slope. Uh, the syntaxis slope is, uh, is larger than two. And uh, when you uh, throw the flux, the same. And uh, if you tune the, the G in this region, there's a, a chiral fixed point. And this is a time reversal symmetric broken uh, fixed point, but it's a stable fixed point. Um, so we can sit on the fixed point and just do a c c calculation. And yes, there's a it breaks the priority. There's a two sets of uh, different priorities. So for example, one two and two one are different. So one two will be here, two one is here. Okay. And 
yeah, and different. And with our technique, we can also check if how stable is the 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 fixed the, the fixed point. So we don't sit on a fixed point, and we can we sit down this uh, uh, two places. So this is uh, so this is a pi over two four. This is my initial condition, and it arches to this uh, expected result, but slowly. But this one is closer to this uh, fixed point, so it arches faster, converges. So uh, the end results also um, confirms that um, although you start from a, 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 away from a fixed point, it will flow to this, this fixed point. Again, there's a, another fixed point which has been controversial. People don't really know if this exists. Okay? And this is so-called a m fixed point. So it will be at a phi equal to 0 or phi equal to pi. So these are the, the, the fixed points. These are, this is a very unstable fixed point. Okay? So if you start from here, then it will flow to the uh, uh, chiral fixed point. And here, there is some uh, argument that this should be the this should be the the, the the pattern. This should be the formula for this uh, m conductance for this m fixed point. And um, so we can see that this is a, this uh, straight line is actually this conjecture, and we, we can pretty much confirm this is uh, as reaching this uh, this fixed point. Um, another uh, interesting thing is because we can do several different um, coupling constants, and we can just do a fit. Okay? And uh, the to do a fit in this formula, and this is the gamma we get okay? uh, with this fit, and this is very close to uh, four over nine. Okay, four nice. So. Um, so this is a very clear evidence that um, the, uh, the prediction by the field theory, um, this fixed point, uh, does uh, exist. Um, so the next few slides will be uh, some thing that, at least in our simulation, doesn't quite agree with the prediction, but this may be the, the land scale is, uh, needs to, to really uh, observe this uh, this uh, behavior is large. So for example, there's a fixed point uh, called a D fixed point at the stronger coupling. And uh, here is the prediction. Um, we can see it, is, it try to reach this, but still not quite. Okay? And uh, a stronger, strong coupling, it looks like there's coming here. Um, also, is there n fixed point in, in this case? Okay. When phi equal to zero, we can asymptotically see maybe, but it's still non conclusive. So the prefactor, I mean, because uh, with, with this formula, the prefactor is fixed. Even. So this is the line we expect, but it seems to be it's not converged yet. Okay, so at this region we don't really know, and there are some caveats I, 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 I'm not, I don't, I, I, I didn't mention in it. So it's a, a very strong initial uh, state dependence, but this is something that we're, we're still working on. So finally, uh, I'll conclude. So um, this uh, numerical method we propose basically use this infinite boundary condition to simulate this semi infinite wire. It's actually pretty robust and it's not so difficult to, to implement. And uh, we and it allows us uh, to study this junction free physics at different length scales. Um, so we successfully confirmed the, the existence of M fixed point in this wide junction. Um, so this can be applied to other wires. Okay, so these are the lists that we were, I hope I can do. Okay. Um, also, we can easily generalize this uh, to do a non-equivalent physics. Okay, so you can have a junction with uh, some finite bias that is steady states. Okay. Um, 
So there's a, a lot of interesting questions that I mean, uh, one can really attack using these kind of methods. And yeah, so um, we so um, all these calculations are using our own tensor neighbor library. Okay. Um, yeah. So thank you. ideas here, but we haven't really worked out uh, some, there's uh, some small details. For example, you can increase the bias, right? So basically this is in a sense a steady state, right? So you can just evolve the system. But, uh, um, but what we'll think, so this is actually a, a very, um, sharp quench because uh, you will think that if you have infinite boundary condition here then there should be a reservoir then the chemical potential should just adjust itself in a way that when you reach the uh, steady state there's a but this hasn't been uh, studied yet so we and we still have some problem because if we have a finite window so what we see is that there's a, a sort of like reflection. So basically there's a, a impedance mismatch between the, the, the boundary condition and the box. So we see this like a um, like reflection of the, the, the waves. So there's a, some, but the idea is it's very simple. It's just time evolve it and see what happens. In, in this calculation, I, I think that you will put the unit of the time of the evolution. Oh, yes. Is there any difference in the variance between the mass of the time of the break and the zero time of the break? Because in emission time, you, you don't really care about the, the accuracy. The, in, the, in the real time evolution, mm -hmm. you want to retain the unitarity, um, but we, we do basically what, what conventional do you do, you just diagonalize this local uh, time evolution operator, the Hamiltonian, and then, right. so, um, yeah, we didn't use very sophisticated uh, the time evolution method, but we'll see that if you're, you're steady, it takes a long time to reach your steady state, then there'll be an issue, because we can use, say, say like time dependent variation of principle. That kind of things. Uh, is there any uh, I mean, direct method to obtain the conformal data, I mean, like uh, I mean, uh, scaling variant tensor? I mean, in, I mean in, as you know, TLG methods you can define in, I mean, in scaling variant tensor and mm -hmm. directly extract the conformal data out of that data. Isn't it possible to try something similar to this kind of thing? Uh, yes. Um, so um, there's actually a, a method by Glenn. So basically, you can what you can do is take your MPS. I, I don't have the slide here, but I'm just put it up away. Okay. So just take an MPS. And you try to locally match to some kind of uh, uh, isometry. So it's just kind of doing the mirror idea, but I just take the MPS as a, and then you use that. So basically, you can you can construct some some uh, ascending operator and use that to to get the scaling dimension mm -hmm. that way. Yeah. But that's actually very interesting because. Um, 
we have all these wave functions, and we can we we, we really want to extract this, but the problem is that the student is graduating. So if anybody is interested in work to collaborate, I'm I'm open to collaboration. Thank you.